So the talk of Bitcoin going to 20K or 30K, I don't think it can reach those levels. Hello, everyone. Today, our video highlight is based on Invest Answers, Benjamin Cowan and Tom Crown. Benjamin Cowan is an American researcher, financial analyst, YouTuber, and creator of the Into the Cryptoverse analytics website and community. Invest Answers is a YouTube channel which describes itself as a guide to financial freedom, real estate, crypto stocks, derivatives, options, and other tools to get to your financial destination. It is run by James. Tom Crown is a host r slash cryptocurrency podcast, crypto quant verified, and a crypto activist. In this video, Invest Answers James said about feds, they basically increase the amount of costs, have reduced the GDP and spend the country in the worst of recession. He also predicts that Bitcoin is not going below 30K and predicts that there is a strong 85-90% chance that Bitcoin will go up than going down. Benjamin Cowan, on the other hand, is not impressed by Ethereum valuations against Bitcoin. He said, I do lean bearish on ETH and BTC valuation form here till the end of the year. Tom Crown says that there is a lot of Ethereum that is locked up in 2.0 contract and lots of chains are locking ETH. So that's the reason that ETH price is more stable with regards to BTC. James of Invest Answer claims, USK is the less risky stablecoin and I won't risk my money on Anchor Protocol. He also believes that there are ways of making money in the flat and down market as well. But remember, once they add 100 basis points to the cost of servicing the government debt, which is call it 30 trillion, they basically increase the amount of costs that they have. They reduce GDP and shoot themselves in the foot and spin the country into worse of a recession. I think we're already in a recession, but it'll just get worse and worse. Um, if you look at all the macro stuff that's happened, like mortgage interest rates have just been stunning. Good to go from 2.5% to 5.3% in 16 weeks is just, pff, I've never seen anything like that in 30 years. It hit 35.2 today. We still have that higher low. But worst case scenario, I know there are big Middle Eastern sovereign funds that are ready to buy at 32K, under 35K. And that they just every time it dips lower, more money will come in and accumulate it. So the talk of Bitcoin going to 20K or 30K, I don't think it can reach those levels. So even if we do hit that 32K floor, that's only 6.7% from where we are now. Therefore, I'm pretty confident. May not nail the bottom, but accumulating at this price, the risk reward, you know, 85%, 90% chance we're going to go higher from here, 10, 15% chance we're going to go lower. That's the way I see the world. My thesis on Ethereum, I'm, a, I'm an Ether bull. It's, it's actually number two in my portfolio after Bitcoin. But I do lean bearish on the Ether Bitcoin valuation from here until the end of the year. And this has actually happened many years. Like if you go look at 2016, 2017, 2018, 29, like literally every single year, I think, except for last year, the Ether Bitcoin valuation has bled sometimes starting in the summer until the end of the year. And then it picks back up in, in Q1 of the following year. So what do you guys think about Ether Bitcoin? Is it going to hold this strength of, I mean, I think right now it's at like 0 0.075 or something, which is to me, it seems like it's incredible. I mean, I, I like it. But I'm also I'm also very surprised by it. I, I'm hard pressed to say that the flipping narrative is still really in play in the way it was earlier. I was really hoping to take some profits up at point one or point point one two or something like that. Mm -hmm. But what I think is probably holding this up is I do believe there is a lot of Ethereum locked into still the F 2.0 contract. I, I might be mistaken, Ben. Probably you could probably no, you're, correct me. You're right. There's lots. There's a lot locked out still locked up a lot of supply there's a lot of uh chains that are using ethereum and locking ethereum up i think that there's really a, just a good amount of supply that just isn't available to the market right now and i think that might be why it's able to sustain this range for so long i would say if we're going to see bitcoin break that low and we're going to go into the gloomy doomy scenario it's going to be hard to imagine that Ethereum can hold this evaluation. I, I would really see it probably returning back to that 0.5 or 0 0.05 or 0 0.03 range at the depth of a bear market. And, you know, I was doing a little bit of research and, and looking at, at, at what has historically happened when we've seen inflation going up this quickly. And you'd have to go back to like the 70s or the 40s, right? The 70s or the 40s. 
And what I saw is, you know, any time inflation is soaring like this, you typically see the S&P not do that well that year. OK, so it, it seems somewhat likely that this is going to be a red year for the S&P, as, as painful as that is to, to say. It seems like that is unless inflation gets under control quickly, which I'm not really sure that it's going to. But one of the also, one of the things we also see is that once inflation has peaked in the past, even if it's still high, as long as the direction is down, then I think it allows the Fed to pivot and become you know, more dovish. And then it goes back to risk on markets. Um, well, the, the, and the, the secret there for the audience is it's very easy to make money in up markets. Like last year was just still mind blowing when we look back and reflect. But there's also ways of making money in down markets and flat markets too. So people need to be aware of that. Uh, USDC. Is low risk or high? Low risk, yeah. And then I wouldn't put uh, my money on things like Anchor Protocol, for example. I know it's very tempting. It's like 18% APY, but uh, for uh, for the, the risk for me isn't worth it. I'd rather preserve capital. It's always my focus. Preserve capital first, alpha second. Exit closer to the 120 area. I think it'll be range bound in that regard. Um, I spent a lot of time studying the algorithmic stablecoin and the model. I think the Bitcoin backed component is a game changer. So it's very, very positive, very bullish. But remember, the risk of Luna is extreme. Remember, Anchor Protocol is a de facto Ponzi and it's a house of cards. If you know that peg could be could unravel very quickly, it's in its current form, it's not sustainable. But sometimes the reward is worth the risk. And that's the important thing to look at here. So for the range, yes, Luna, I like. Solana, I prefer. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of James, Ack Invest Answers, Tom Crown, Benjamin Cowan. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.